Hello, podcast fans. Do you want to listen to two people who are very full of themselves talk about race and writing? Then you've come to the right uh, 44-year-old white man. And 33-year-old Chinese woman uh, hosted who, podcast. Uh, this is Dan Harmon and Jessica Gao. And we have a new podcast called Whiting Wongs. It came about because we were working on Rick and Morty together, writing the Pickle Rick episode. Um, we started talking about race, writing. And a little bit of gender stuff. Yeah. And at some point we said, let's do a podcast because why why, why windbag about this? <laughs> to only each other in private. Uh, when we can, we, can, we can draw a giant awkward skid mark on the uh, eardrum of America. But don't worry, the actual podcast itself won't just be us finishing each other's sentences. <laughs> yeah, I know. When did we become so cute? Uh, <laughs> this is because we're our third recording of a commercial. Um, uh, so, yeah, no, it's mostly us like having an awkward uh, but honest conversation where, you know, it's like the, the kind of stuff that you can't have at work because you might legitimately like get sued or like at least like blacklisted or something. Like if you're trying to be cool, you have questions uh, about this like weird changing world under our feet. I'm pretty... Um, desensitized to sounding like an idiot. Uh, it hasn't killed me yet, so we 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 go there. We have the the weird conversations. Um, so if you if you're interested in that, uh, come listen to Whiting Wongs. Feral audio. How tight is uh, tonight? At what time? I don't know. I'll find out. It says nine, and it's on nine. Why is that correct? I don't know. I'm saying this is a Google Calendar glitch. Okay. Are we rolling? Oh, yeah. Oh, we are? Oh, good. <laughs> this is all part of the show. We don't edit anything. This is the tech support section. <laughs> uh, I'm here with Nils. Yeah, how do you pronounce my last name? Delar? That's pretty good. What is it? Delaire? Delaire, yeah. Delaire. Yeah. Nils Delaire. Are you French? Uh, no. Is that French? Is that a French name? No. Uh, it is a French name, but I'm not French. Can you, this, this sounds good? <laughs> Matt? Matt? <laughs> what do you mean, does it sound like? There's a lot of hums, and there's an ice machine. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going to sound when he plays his, uh, his piano? What did you bring? Uh, I brought a uh, guitar. Oh. I just started music. I'm not... Yeah, I saw something, like, I was listening to a couple of your podcasts, and there was something about, like, do you need to know bar chords? Right. Do I? I don't know. I was hoping you, that you answered that. Do you? Uh, I, I do, but I don't know if that's a van just from vanity, because they look cool. They do look cool, but I don't look cool. I mean, why polish this turd, you know what I'm saying? What else do you have to do? <laughs> I guess I could polish it. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> So, I uh, she sent me all the research and I haven't done any. Okay. I was gonna do it. I That's thought fine. I thought we were gonna That's meet fine. at four. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, Tish is an idiot. Let me go on record <laughs> saying that. How do you know Tish? I know Tish because she was BFFs with my wife in uh, back in the high school days. Right. Cool. I should tell everyone, although it'll probably be in the description. We're in New York, and my favorite bar, the, the Library Bar. In New York, do you come to this bar? I've been to it before. Yeah, but I, I'm not a regular. I could tell you were a regular when she recognized you. Yeah, yeah, I've been coming here for. Are you? Years did you? And years. What, what's your like New York, LA breakdown? I, I lived in New York for a while, um, in the '90s, like from '92 to like. Hi. What size shirt do you wear? What size shirt? Yeah. Uh, triple extra large. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fattest man on earth. See, that's regular talk. They don't talk to that unless they talk like that unless you're regular. No, no, they're very polite to you. They, they, yeah. yeah. It, you know, but they know I don't tip. I, I saw the, the warnings. There's like six warnings about not tipping behind the bar. Oh, yeah. I guess that's a lot of Europeans come issue. here. French oh, really? guys like you yeah. don't tip. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I lived in New York for a while and. Uh, wait, you're interviewing me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, I worked on Conan when it first started, and um, and then a couple other shows after that, and uh, and then moved. I was back and forth for a couple of years, New York and L.A., and now mostly L.A. So you were you moved to L.A. <coughs> pre-9-11? I, 
I moved LA like nine, eleven, and th- and a half, Got like it. like an hour after nine eleven happened. Got it. As soon as they started, booking yeah, flights we again. we lived on. Uh, I, I had a uh, I have a little. I had a little daughter, now she's an adult daughter, mm-hmm. but uh, she was two years old and we lived by the Holland Tunnel mm. and saw the plane hit out our window. Oh, no shit. Yeah. The, for the, the first one or the second one? Second one. Wow. Yeah. I was like, what? what's that second, is that second plane trying to help? And then it smashed right into it. Wow. Did she see oh, it? Thank you. Uh, no. She yeah. was too little. She couldn't right. see that high. She was, yeah. Yeah. It. Uh, so we got the hell out of it. My parents were visiting at the time and... Uh, we drove uh, we drove upstate for a while, mm. and then uh, yeah, and the air was so bad yeah. because of all uh, the dead bodies in the air. Right, and probably Holland Tunnel was not like a chill place to be around then. No, at that time. no. But I got out of uh, I was driving and got out of uh, town pretty quickly. Yeah, like, like literally, like that day, or like oh, like yeah, no, before the second tower fell. Oh no shit! Yeah. So you just you were just like fucking. I was like all three stooges. Yeah. Just got the hell out of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, went over the the um, the Henry Hudson Bridge mm-hmm. you know, north. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's funny that we're talking about 9/11 because I just happened on YouTube this morning to. There was a link for the Howard Stern show yeah. on 9-11, and yeah. that's what I was listening to. I lived in Boston at the time, and that's what I was listening to. Right. When yeah, he had a big show that day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Um, and so I, I like checked out that YouTube link for a couple of minutes. Anyway, 9-11. 9-11? Do you yeah. have any 9-11 songs? Did you ever write a song about 9-11? No, I think that's, I think that you did, that's kind of scary because it would have to be, I don't know. Yeah. You have to be really good or really bad. I think if it's like anywhere between really good or really bad, then that's just embarrassing. Right. I had a song on my first record, which came out earlier this year, uh-huh. um, called "New York Is Snowing," and uh, oh and, yeah. And my uh, my bandmate just uh, assumed it was about 9/11 and just started telling people it's about 9/11. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not. Yeah. It's about S and M. I wrote it like in the 90s. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. I uh, when, whenever people recast my anecdotes I never correct them and so yeah. now there's like anecdotes that actually that are, have nothing to do with the truth because they sort of evolved do, do your songs get misinterpreted um listen if they get in, interpreted or misinterpreted <laughs> you love it yeah yeah I guess I do too yeah um, so you're new at songwriting well I've been writing for years but I'm just new at um, I'm just focusing on that now and you're doing and, like and I got my first band together at the age of fifty two. Oh, that's really so, cool. Yeah. See, you can polish a turd. I can polish a turd. Yeah. Uh, I was listening to. Oh, thank you. I was listening to um, a couple episodes, and you're doing like a Halloween album and a Christmas album. <laughs> yeah, I did a Halloween album. Finished it right before Halloween, so no one could hear it. Sure. Well, and uh, it gives it a long trail for hyping yeah. up for next year. <laughs> uh, how's that sounding? It Sounds okay. It's not bad. Okay. All right, good. <laughs> you got to run into any rights issues now? No, no, no one listens to this show. Oh, okay. <laughs> then, yeah. Let alone then you're the perfect guest. Who who is this? Who's playing right now? Who's pl- who is who is it? Oh yeah. Oh, the Misfits. There you go. Glenn Danzig. Uh, all right. Money. Yeah, they're n- they're never gonna listen to this show. Maybe I'll have them on and they'll sue me. As long as you talk over Yeah. Okay. And then you can play no guitar over too. Yeah. yeah, 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 totally. It'll, It'll be perfect. great. What key is this in? <laughs> <laughs> ah, the Misfits. So no uh, I'll stop asking you questions in a minute, but I'm, I am curious. So when you're doing like a Christmas album, is that, those are all original songs? That it was are... all, all original. No sleigh bells. Yeah, didn't okay. put any. I, originally, I thought we'll put sleigh bells, we'll put all kinds of Christmas. Let's save that for the remastered version once it's <laughs> yeah. platinum. But it was kind of it was sounding good with just the band. Yeah. And, we, and I uh, hired a choir too. So what does that mean? Does that mean what are you talking about with Christmas? Like, it's just it... songs about my experiences with Christmas. Okay. So they're not that happy. Right. Because yeah. usually Christmas carols, those are like origin songs about like. Right. Yeah. I have one song called Oh Bethlehem. Uh-huh. And it's vaguely political and about mm. Jesus' supposed birth and mm. all that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, I feel like there's maybe like some space in the marketplace for some non uh, 
creationist or whatever. Yeah. What's the what's the word for it? Uh, secular. Secular there you Christmas go. song. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you have like I caught my mommy kissing Santa Claus. Right. right? That's a little creepy. Yeah, yeah. I'll be home for Christmas. Super depressing. Yeah. Because do you know that song? He's not coming home for Christmas. I yeah. Don't know if you like. Yeah, yeah. He's not coming home for Christmas. No, I know the ending. Yeah. That says it. And then. Uh, the creepiest one. Have you ever heard uh, uh, "Baby, It's Cold Outside"? Yeah, yeah. That's. But a, I never really paid attention to the lyrics. I'm not a like pay attention to the lyrics. It's a kind woman who wants to leave, and the guy won't let her. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. That's. It's really? like, baby, it's too cold. I don't go. I know I gotta go. Yeah, it'd be a real shame if you slipped and fell. Yeah, yeah. No, it's the rapiest song ever. Wow. I like. Um, the reason I'm curious is that I like. Uh, the way that I write songs often is around a theme. Yeah. So there's like uh, putting constraints on what you can sing about or yeah. whatever. To me is is very freeing. What are your themes? Uh, so you so um, outer space. Oh, nice. Um, That's a huge theme. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's sort of been my, where my biggest success has been with outer space songs. Yeah. Um, Are they like funny outer space songs? Yeah. I mean, they're not like jokes, but right. I think they're like, you know, yeah. they're like, you know. I kind of, I feel like I don't do jokes either, but they, there's a humorous slant to my yeah, stuff, yeah. something yeah, yeah. like that. Well, because it's like, right. I feel like if there's a joke, then it doesn't have a lot of replay value. Right. But if it's something that's like... <laughs> Unless you're wit- Weird Al Yankovic. Witty. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'm, I've been getting my kids into him recently, which has been a lot, oh, don't do a lot of fun. Really? Why not? I don't like Weird Al. Really? You don't like Weird Al? I think he goes for low-hanging fruit, really. Yeah, he probably has a song called Low-Hanging Fruit. <laughs> yeah, based on glow-planging yeah. fruit. <laughs> <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> now, I guess, you know, you're young, so how old are you? How old do you think I am? I would say you're like mid-30s. 42. Forty-two. Oh, you yeah. look good for forty-two. Yeah, but still, you're young. Yeah, you're ten years younger than me. Yeah, so that's why you like. I Weird got ten Al. years before I have to start polishing turns. Yeah, and hating Weird Al. Yeah. All right. Interesting. I don't. I've hate. never actually really met anybody who hate, hates Weird Al because I don't. I feel like he doesn't aspire to be anything other than what he is. Yeah, it, it doesn't make much sense. Yeah. But uh, he's doing a new his new tour. I saw that he was doing booking a. T- uh, a tour and I was like this is great I'm going to take I have an 8 year old I'm, like, I'm going to take her <coughs> and do the whole thing but it's all it's not it's not parody songs it's all his originals oh. and there's no like big set pieces it's just like all about the music and maybe like, I'd like that see that's funny because to me I was like no that's because I hate his parody me. stuff yeah I just think they're stupid they are stupid I don't hate them he's got a yeah he, he's, he is stupid he dares, he dares <laughs> to be stupid uh, someone once said to me Come on, he's good. Another one rides the bus. I'm like, that, that's oh, a that, dumb, yeah. that's a dumb title. He's like thinking something better, and I didn't even blink. I said, another one wipes the butts. There you go. Already better. Yeah, but he's like a, a straight PG, G to PG. That's what's wrong with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that, that that I can appreciate. But um, <laughs> know thyself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, so you do uh, you do space? Yeah. So I actually brought a, I brought something for you, and if if you haven't done any research, this might help contextualize things. So I have a band called Future Folk. We have a coloring book. Oh, so that's for you. nice. So <laughs> the concept is that so we're from outer space, mm-hmm. and we landed on Earth and formed a bluegrass band, and that's sort of the the backstory. Yeah. And so our canon is songs about. <coughs> Missing our home planet. There's songs about sort of like not belonging. There's songs about isolation. There's songs about things on Earth that we think are really weird and unusual. Right. But those are usually the most sort of benign and, and yeah. pedestrian things that we're blown away by. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we have this. So it could get deep, like your, your yeah. Music. You know, like okay. So here's and I actually like Vonnegut maybe. Like it's uh, Von, if Vonnegut was a band. I, I would say um, not. I would say maybe that's flattering. I'd say maybe more like Shel Silverstein. Right. <laughs> Deep. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take it. Sure. I haven't heard it yet, but... No. <laughs> uh, so, and then, and we have a, a feature-length movie that's on Netflix. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. How did you do that? 
uh, we had friends who were filmmakers who basically, you know, it was one of those things where everything came together at the right time. Yeah. They had a project that fell through. They wanted to do their first feature. Um, both myself and Jay were sort of at transitory places in our lives yeah. where we could take the time off to do this. They were like, let's see if we can get the funding. And six months later, it came through. We shot this, shot the movie. Um, and so that, so it's done pretty well. Yeah. It had a theatrical release. Um, oh, I can't wait to see it. A, uh, 94% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. Nice. How many uh, reviews? That's the key. Just two. Yeah. <laughs> How do you get 94% when there's only two? No, no, no. Uh, I don't know how many. I don't know how many ratings. Not enough. Not enough for us to be certified platinum, but enough for us to. Yeah. Uh, for them to. Well, that's you know, great. Yeah. Legitimately. Be able I mean, to say that. you've heard a couple of these shows. You know, I don't do a lot of research. I like kind of learning about the person and then going yeah. and listening. Maybe there's going to be a second season, if anyone cares, mm. where I have people back and I. And you know and what right, I'm talking about. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, if, if you're successful enough to have a second season, why would you mess with that formula? I think you just continue to yeah, go in blind. It's not even successful. I could just right. strong arm my way in. Yeah. There you go. If I wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you write, do you write with your partner? Uh, Jay, is it? Yeah, Jay. Yeah. Um, I'm the primary songwriter. We have a couple songs that, that he wrote. Uh, and I think there's one or two songs we collaborated on, but for the most part, it's my um, my songwriting. Right. And how do you uh, go about uh, with like the initial idea? Is it something <clears throat> like are you thinking about the world in general and go, hey, what would an alien think about this? You know. Usually not. Usually, I'm thinking about my own personal experience and then recontextualize it from the perspective. I think that's what that. I meant when yeah. I worded it badly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, sometimes I'll hear a phrase that, um, you know, like here's an example. This is not a song I haven't written. But someone the other day said um, astronomical, and I was like, that would be a great name for a future folk song. Like yeah, astronomical. yeah. So usually it starts with a little kernel of an idea. Um, in terms of the lyrics, and then and then I build it out from there, and I, I sweat the details pretty hard. Yeah, yeah. How about an astronomicon? That's the that's the um, the fan based event around that song. Like when that song gets <laughs> super popular, and we're like at the Javits Center. That's astronomicon. Wow. Yeah, I was thinking of it as a a book about the universe. Like the Necronomicon. Oh, yeah, yeah, like the Necronomicon. Yeah, 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 yeah But totally. that's, I, yeah, that's a good take, too. Right, and the maybe astronaut. instead of the, like, the the cover with the, like, dried parchment face, it yeah. has, like, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy yeah. face on the cover yeah, instead yeah. of something like that. Yeah. Douglas Adams, maybe you're the the band version of Douglas Adams. Yeah, listen, I'll take again, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> those, are, those are good shoes to, to stand in. So where, what are some titles of your songs? Um, so, so Future Folk Songs, we have... Um, Probably the biggest, uh, the the one that's been the best received is called Space Worms. We have one called Over the Moon. We have a song called uh, I Cannot Breathe in Your Atmosphere. We have a song called Impossible Dream. We have a song called Pirate Krong. That's one that Jay wrote. We have a Wait, song what's, called what's that last one? Pirate Krong. So it's a sort of a character sketch right, yeah, yeah. about this gentleman. Yeah. And uh, and space worms is that about like wormholes? Nope. No. Nope. Nope. It's about our um, origins as worm farmers on our home planet. Oh. And the fact that there's no worms on on Earth, and that's disappointing. There's no space worms on Earth. Space. There worms. are right. There are earthworms. That's yeah, why yeah. they're called earthworms. Right. 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 <laughs> uh, cool. So, did you ever? Um, I mean, like, like, have you ever had your heart broken? Yes. Did you ever, like, think of, uh, did you write a song about an alien getting his heart broken or anything like that? Yeah, oh, that's, oh, that's right. That's interesting. Uh, I have not specifically written a song about an alien getting his heart broken. No. But that is a good sort of, um, that is a good analogy of how I would. Right, yeah. Sort yeah, of I like this idea that, you know, you're going through things. As an Earthling, but yeah. you're interpreting it. As and some of them are silly, you know what I mean. Well, some sure, of them yeah. are like straight up storytelling. Yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 then yeah, I think the ones that work the best are the ones that have uh, universal truth in them. That's sort of dressed up in this context. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I, I I feel like it it's disarming in a good way to have 
the other thing is, I mean, you saw the pictures, like we have that yeah. outfits. Yeah. So we come out and we play and we like are wearing these ridiculous things. Yeah. Um, and the juxtaposition between that and being able to like actually play reasonably well and have these songs that are well thought out, I think it's like the low, I do very well with low expectations. Yeah. So I feel like you come out wearing these silly things with very low expectations. And People think... Yeah, if you look at the, if you look at the back cover, you can see the actual uh, right. actual costume. And it's just two of you guys in yep. the band. Yep. Uh, I play banjo and he plays guitar, and we oh, both wow. sing. Nice. Um. Yeah, that's great. I can't wait to hear it now. I can't believe I've waited this far. That's okay. Is it, is it, Most it, people it, will wait much longer. <laughs> is, it, is it more like adult based? Or? No, actually, uh, it is. Was originally so so we like when we started playing doing this act. The um, so I, I mean like this is not the sum entirety of my musical existence, but yeah. this is the one thing that's happened to just become the most popular. Yeah, yeah. never would have guessed that hap- would yeah. happen. This yeah. was not the thing that I was like. So how did you start? What did you? Uh, I mean, I was doing all kinds of crazy projects when I first moved to New York. This was one of many. We used to play actually in this neighborhood a lot. We would do shows, um, you know, in East Village and like these dive bars. We'd do comedy shows. It yeah. was not, not even like necessarily musical gigs. Did you ever play Sidewalk? Over here? No. 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 Where's that? I don't know. It's like on uh, 7th and A here. Okay. And uh, they used to have a really big, um, popular open mic, but they also See, had if it was shows. popular, it was probably we're not playing there. Well, it was an open mic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, but uh, yeah, and then, and then if you did well in the open mics, they'd give you uh, a, a show. Right. There. Um, and so, you know, it was one of these things we did it once. As a, as a goof and it went really well and we are like we should do it again we wrote a couple more songs and then it just kind of kept rolling and um, again not, not ever imagining that this would be something that caught on yeah. and I guess if I had imagined that it would be something that would have caught on I would not have engineered these like terrible costumes that are hard like literally, right, right, like, literally right. seriously like the first one was like a bucket over our head with a, with a thing oh, cut yeah. out of it maybe um, that's what I should do is like make out like a, a really uncomfortable costume out of it, no, don't do, no, 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 don't do that. Because that's I'm, all I get popular. Yeah, well, <laughs> but it, but but it's um, it's kind of hard to play like that because it's uh, it's yeah, uncomfortable I can barely play and it's like anyway. hard to yeah. hear and yeah. um, so uh, and then the you know and then so our scale was very small and then this movie thing happened and then that just sort of like yeah. so subsequently we've done a U.S. tour when we play shows now like cities I've never been in before people show up with buckets on their heads they make their, their homemade costumes oh, wow. the fans are super creative which I love yeah that's great uh, in fact I've seen some that are like actually probably much better than the ones that, <laughs> that, that, that we have that people have put a lot more care into this thing <laughs> oh man well I can't think of a more perfect place than you to play a song with a jukebox going and yeah there's a baby in the room yeah this is a the dive bar, and there's a baby here. People, people, the oh, baby has a, has a face tat. No, the baby's dad has a face tat. Oh, the father. <laughs> if this is the kind of place where a baby would have a face tat. It's her baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, she was she was pregnant here. Sorry, I, I, you probably you folks at home can't hear half this conversation. Uh, there's a baby. The bartender's holding a baby behind the bar right now. It's her baby. I like that. And she was pregnant here, yeah. Do uh, you want to play a song? Oh, yep. yeah, play it now. In between songs. Fortunately, the song's only 38 seconds long. So. <laughs> what is... Uh... Oh, no. Uh, so, yeah, so, uh, so sort of... One of the one of the other weird projects, actually, how I met the um, Jay from Future Folk, is we wrote a, a musical called "Who Is Wilford Brimley." That was kind of like right. a send up of. Oh, I don't um, want that to fall. Yeah. Um, it was like a you know like e true Hollywood story, completely made up about Wilford Brimley and we yeah. had all these songs. And I played Steve Gutenberg, and it was super silly. Uh-huh. Uh, and so we produced this thing, and we and we put it on at the Brick Theater. Tish, did you ever see? No. Okay. Yeah. Are you, are you playing soon? What's that? Are you playing soon again? Uh, no, we don't have any gigs no. at the moment. Fair. All right, should I do a song? Yeah, do a song. Um, I hate it when people sort of contextualize what they're about to play. I like it. All right, so then I'll do it. <laughs> um, I like so, to know what I'm gonna hear. 
so this is uh, so this is called Over the Moon. This was written and arranged for two people, so I'm gonna try and do my best to do it as a as a single. Right. But just know that it's twice as awesome, maybe three times as awesome right. with the harmonic vocals. Yeah, and not in a bar with the ice machine going. Exactly. First I found you Then I confound you I should have said I'm from outer space From the very start Explanation Destroy population But when I first laid my eyes on you had a change of heart When it's not night My sky still fills With lights I see stars That's that's really great. It's um, I was I was you know I was worried that it was gonna be like lasers 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 you know yeah you know 
Uh, but no, it's, I, 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 I try and find a, a universal truth and then yeah. put an absurd sort of skin on it. Yeah. That's, I mean, I, I aspire to like write songs like that, you know? Like oh. they're clever and but emotional. Yeah, I, I like um, I like simplicity, and that wasn't always my path. I used to like complexity, and um, I mean, I was a big growing up. I was really into like Zappa and Fish, right. and like the more complicated the arrangements, the better. Elvis Costello, you like? Elvis I never got into El- no. Elvis Costello. Yeah, and I don't know if that's a taste thing or just sort of like a circumstance I, thing. I didn't get into him at first because of his voice, but mm-hmm. I learned to like it. I, people have tried to turn me on to him, and I feel like, um, I don't know, I, I just haven't, haven't, hasn't, yeah. like, hit me in the right way. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, so like a, like a Jonathan Richman or somebody who is uh, very, like Richmond, very yeah. simple, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's, there's like a, there's like a truth in it yeah. that's, that's touching, right? Yeah. It's like... Yeah, simple, yeah, and the truth. And, and he has clever lyrics. You know? Yeah, but yeah. clever in, in simplicity. Yeah, exactly. He's not showing off. No, yeah. it's like boiling it down to like... If whatever, anything, whatever sometimes he makes fun of himself. Yeah, yeah, I like that too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Anybody who takes himself too seriously, right? I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that. Yeah. Yeah. Who's, who, who, well, I guess we shouldn't shit on people on this podcast. No. I mean, I don't mind, but... I am not, I'm not going to drag you down with me. <laughs> I already did it with Weird Al. <laughs> <laughs> I fought for Weird Al, for what it's worth. No, you you did well. You you turned me around a little bit. Yeah. I, I, Jesus. Sorry. You need to get that. Uh, no, I don't need to get it. Um, I just don't know how to turn my phone. My phone is broken, so the ringer can't turn off oh. now. Um, until it rings, then I can turn it off. Oh really? Yeah. Um, so so yeah. So I try to do these sort of like conceptual things, and maybe that's because I'm afraid of sort of just talking about myself, or or just you know being like feel stupid just talking about me. Yeah. You well, know? actually, that's an interesting point. It's a it's kind of easier if you have a character yeah, to yeah. write personal songs. Yeah. Now imagine you you're a character and you have a helmet on. Yeah. Imagine how, like, yeah, exactly. that's, that's kind of cool because you're just like, I don't give a fuck, yeah. like, whatever. Now, we we talked a little, like, I asked if it's if it's more adult based, and you said. No, so the, I the think, answer I is. I think origi- that got interrupted. Yeah, it did, right. So um, originally it was, yes, it was tailored for sort of the East Village, yeah. you know, comedy world. Yeah. Um, and then what I found is that kids really like the music yeah and that there's been a tremendous response like, like what age group um pretty much like from maybe five to twelve yeah or something like that cool. yeah uh and which so that insight was very interesting to me and our our album which uh which did pretty well it was on the uh, billboard top ten for comedy for for a little yeah. bit uh they, I, I, there's one f bomb on the album, and yeah. that's sort of my biggest regret. Is that mm. that? I think teach kids about the f bomb. Sure, but I also <laughs> I, I, listen. I don't care about that. It's yeah. more about like, are people going to be turned away because they see that right, there's yeah. explicit lyrics on it yeah, and yeah. think it's worse or whatever? Yeah. But that's kind of my that's yeah. kind of my. Right. I wish that um, and and you know I've been tr- trying to develop a. Uh, children's TV show around this concept as well, sort of like a, an animated, yeah. animated thing. Because yeah. I think that the like, the, I mean, I think the IP is is um, is really cool, and I think it has a lot of potential. And I also think it could like be super successful and make a lot of people a lot of money. Well, I don't know if you know this, but I have a cartoon studio. I did not know that. It's actually a real studio. It's not a cartoon studio, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we do. Dumb cartoons. By the way, I was just I was just groping around for my capo for the last two minutes, and I had already put it on. Oh, uh, it's like yeah, it's like oh, it's like uh, when you're looking for your glasses and you're wearing yeah. them. This is by the way, this is my. Uh, you know, there was one time I swear to God, you're gonna love this story because I'm an idiot. Uh, I was looking the longest time for my bicycle, and I was on it. Oh yeah. Like when I was a kid, 
Sometimes I'll be looking at my phone and I'll be like, where's my phone? And it's not in my pockets. And I'll yeah. be like, fuck, I don't know where my phone is. Right. Let me, let me Google that. Right, because it's not a phone anymore. It's yeah. everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. So, so I, this is my five-year-old's guitar. This is like a hundred dollar Yamaha half nice. scale. It sounds great. Guitar. Yeah, I really like it actually. Yeah. This is sort of what I've been playing recently. Yeah. Um, and I thought it would be good to bring today because I feel like it strips away any pretense of performance. Like if you see that, it's not about a performance, it's about Hey, look, I mean, I, I probably like your version that you did here. I would probably like it more. I, I tend to like just simple acoustic mm -hmm. versions. Not that you're not kind of basically acoustic anyway. Sure, but, sure. Uh, does he play electric guitar? Or? No, no, no. It's it's an acoustic acoustic yeah. duo. Yeah. And the thing that I really geek out on is the um, vocal harmonies. Is really sweating, sweating the vocal harmonies and oh, making yeah. them sound like they're sort of like interweaving in a sort oh, of see, that's, like thirds or whatever. That's, that it's like, that's something that well, yeah would never have it with me. I yeah, don't, I don't have a good voice. I don't yeah. have a good voice either. Jay's, Jay's the one with the pipes. I'm super self conscious about my voice. Right. I, I, I listen to it and I, and I think it's no. You have gross. a you have a great voice. Take it from me. A guy I'll with a bad it. voice. All right, <laughs> what? Oh, Tish is talking and not getting me another drink. Another double kettle on the rocks. Would you be so kind as to get me a pork slap? Pork slap. And some kind of delicious. shot, right? No, just a pork slap. <laughs> Didn't she give you a shot earlier? She did. She did? Yeah. And did you drink it? Yeah. yeah. And you don't want another one? No, I'm good. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Exactly. Do you have any kids? I have two kids, yeah. Oh, you have two yeah, kids? Yeah, yeah. How old are they? Seven and uh, eight and five. Oh, yeah. and, and they like the music? They do. In fact, uh, they're fucking inspirational when it comes to writing music. Yeah. Just the malapropisms and yeah, like, yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll sit down and we'll like jam and the stuff that will come out of their mouth. Um, and then it's like they'll start singing something and I'm like, that's awesome. And they'll continue singing. I'm like, shh, 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 I got it from here. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I actually got a few ideas for my daughter when she was little. Like, uh, there was, uh, I gave her, uh, she, she just said to me out of nowhere. And by the way, we're not neglectful parents. You're going to think maybe neglectful when you hear this. But she says, Daddy, when I'm alone, it feels, or no. I got to backwards. Sure. She's, uh, when, when I'm thirsty, it feels like how I feel when I'm alone. And I'm like, whoa. You, you know what? I fucking totally relate with that. I, I get I used that. To, I used to have a weird thing where it was like when I would feel depressed, yeah. it was like a sort of an it's overlap a, with thirst where I would feel something in my... Me, me too. I mean, definitely like kind of a homesickness kind of feel too. That's so weird to hear... But that's like, that's the thing. It's like, yeah. they, they don't know not to articulate those truths. Yeah. And when you hear that shit, yeah. and you're just like... Yeah, that's, like, that's cool. You know, like my kids say stuff by accident that I couldn't, you know, like if I thought of that, it would be the, like my creative high point of the year. Yeah. You know, to come up with that, th those words in that order. I yeah. would be like, that's that was the pinnacle of this year, creativity. Yeah, but yeah. But they're just like, mm. Yeah, they just rattle them yeah. off. Yeah. Like idiots. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, another thing she said, and I named my production company after this, uh, she started singing a song while I was playing guitar. She said, touch my daddy gently, he's very fragile. Oh, yeah, to fragile. <laughs> that's totally, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's an that's a, that's a, uh, album name right there, it's fragile. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, but now, now I'll, uh, you know, she's 18, and I played a song that, uh, it's on the Christmas album, and it's about her. Uh -huh. And it's about how I'm a dad, and I'm, I'm afraid of her growing older and becoming yeah. disenchanted with the world. Yeah. And she uh, she was devastated by the song. Like she, Not be because of what it was about. She thought I loved her more when she was a baby. Oh, interesting. Than now. Yeah. But I think she was on her period. <laughs> also, it's totally fucking true. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, no, it's really cool. And, I, and I, that's what I aspire to is to strip away the like adult shit and get to the I don't know universal I mean I mentioned Shel Silverstein Jonathan Richmond like Dr. Seuss like yeah I like think that. if it's like, make up your own word if there's not a word if right. there's not a word for for or if there's not a word that rhymes make up a word have you ever heard of lard dog I don't think so no he uh he plays in New York too and uh he's his his songs are more like 
uh, kid kind of song, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, but he's he plays an alien from outer space. Okay. Oh out. really? Yeah. Lard yeah. dog. Yeah. I see. It's funny because when you said that my I paused because I was thinking Moon Dog, that guy from the '70s who used to play on like in Times Square and then moved to Germany right, and do these right, like yeah. weird. Um, and and I, I like his music a lot, but I'm not familiar with with Lard Dog. Yeah, Lard Dog is. Uh, yeah, his songs sound they're great, but they're. They're more like novelty songs. Yeah. Well, I've been called, I mean, I, I've been called a novelty act before. Um, and I think that that's sort of like, at first blush, a lot of what I do is sort of novelty act. Right. Um, but I think the challenge then is that's like, the, that's the, the hook, right? That's the knock well, the yeah, door. yeah. And then the trick is to subvert the expectation. That's exactly. I mean, I've done that with TV shows where they start silly and then mm-hmm. and then just add mm-hmm. a little too much reality to them. Yeah, right. Yeah. My the, my first um, the first album I wrote and recorded was in it was probably right around the time that you were driving up the, uh, you know driving up the Mid Hudson. Yeah. You know, getting getting out of right. Dodge. Uh, it was called Touch a Booty, and the concept was it was all songs about booty yeah but every song was a different genre so there was like a funk song there was a right a folk techno song. song a folk song there was a sea shanty um, wow and so you know again I, I've noticed with myself and this is not a conscious decision but I feel like when I'm constrained to something then that gives me a lot more ideas than when someone's like everything's on the table exactly yeah I've never been more fertile than thinking of Halloween songs and that's Christmas why I was songs. asking you about them I was curious yeah. because I'm like I no, can totally see, like, like digging into that. Type I, of thing. I would say a total of like six to seven weeks to write twenty. How oh many wow! Uh, so uh, 12, twenty, yeah, like twenty-five songs. Because um, the Christmas album was very quick. Yeah. Um, and and then and then the Halloween album. So yeah, what the, what is your style? You sort of like sort of like Gatling gun style you're just like here's a bunch of stuff and then see what works and select it or no I uh, I'll work on a song until I like it right that's and, yeah. uh, there I, I don't throw I don't throw anything away like every song we recorded on the Christmas album and the previous album we kept on the album mm-hmm. you know I don't know if that's good or bad you know I mean mm-hmm. you know Maybe a well, hundred, hundred your, people have bought the record. Right. So I think know. I think the answer to that is who who you're making the record for. I'm making it for me. There you go. Then that's yeah. then that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I feel a little guilty because the band is like, all right, now what are we gonna do with this Christmas album? I'm like, I don't know. It's November 9th, and uh, it's kind of too late to promote it. I don't know what to do. Yeah. yeah, maybe. But it's you know, in like digital land, you can do that stuff pretty yeah. quickly. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Like, one, like, like what I, like what I said, uh, when I was working on Conan, when I was first here in New York, it's great because you have the constraints of a talk show to write comedy. Mm-hmm. So you have a lot of people could think, well, that, you know, that, that's got to be difficult, but also you've got a great straight line, which is a talk show. So you've got, right. you know, just all those. Uh, the elements of a talk show, and right. and in in some way, it helps narrow it down yeah, more. Totally. Because I mean, when when you have to write an album, you're like, what am I going to write about? There's a million things to write about. Yeah, it's terrifying. It's, yeah, it's like you you freeze. Yeah. But if you're like, write four songs about that yeah. ice machine. Yeah. Like no. I could write four songs about that ice machine. Sure. I think that's. Uh, yeah. Maybe next time we get together, we'll we'll go yeah. and like. Ice Ice Baby Revisited or something. We should come back with Ice Machine songs. I'm, Challenge uh, accepted. Well, yeah, with my friend, I was like, let's write a Halloween album this year. So he he wrote, he, he wrote one and I wrote one. Mm. We haven't heard each other's yet. Oh, really? That's He's fun. still in the middle of I love of those kind of collaborations. Yeah. Um, and I wish I had more opportunity to collaborate. Um, and quite frankly, I wish I knew more musicians to collaborate with. I feel like the older I get, I'm like, just sort of like more in my own little right. cocoon and well you have a family and yeah yeah, yeah. you gotta you, you know what you gotta do you gotta you gotta 
I'm Cut that family. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was wondering what came next. Best if, thing. Yeah, best yeah. thing that ever happened. Cut them all off. Yeah. No, I can't do that. I can't do that. <laughs> no, no. I, I love my daughter. I see her a lot. It's just I, I'm not good at living with people. Yeah. I could actually live with my daughter because we're both pretty easygoing. Yeah. Uh, but uh, most other women are tough to live with. It's tough, too, because I find that that inspiration strikes, obviously, like randomly um yeah but i have like exactly i have like eight to ten or eleven or whenever yeah. i'm too exhausted at night and that's sort of my window yeah and or statistically or speaking like the inspiration probably not gonna happen in that or window. you're laying awake in bed and you got i got this great idea and then you go into the living room and start playing and your wife comes out like what are you doing oh uh, my she's she's pretty cool i if anything no it's she like, isn't no she, if anything <laughs> if, if anything it's like me i i feel like i'm overly self-conscious about not wanting to subject her to hearing the same like working out the same thing right. over and over. You I, have actually, to, I don't actually think she cares, but like right. my whatever obsessive exactly. compulsive, I'm just like, oh, this it's, must be so. It's on probably here. me too. You know, I probably feel that too. But yeah, but when you write a song, you got to play it over and over, over and over. over. And 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 I mean, I'm, I sort of the way I, I approach it is, I run it through the sander over and over again, and I listen to it, and I think like, what do I hate about this, or like, or, yeah. or like. When am I? I don't know. But like whatever. Like yeah. I, I, I put it to my own standard, which is very high, and I think even higher for myself. And so it goes through the planer a lot yeah. before I can show it to anybody else. So it's not like I'm just like, oh, I wrote a song yesterday at the park. What do you think of it? No, I would never do that. Right. I would go and I would like go in and you know maybe the initial inspiration is sort of freeform, but then I would like put it in whatever grid my brain works on and like go in and sense check every last little thing yeah change little things until i find i think know. it's good to be self-critical at a certain stage i think like with the initial stages that's why i drink yeah in the initial stages i just want to like be free and yeah yeah, yeah. and no, right, and, right, and, right. And, and, and and i'm yeah. the same way how do you get there do you are you i i wish, I, wish I knew i wish there was like a, a a process where i could be like okay i'm gonna get inspired i'm yeah. gonna have a like i don't know yeah. like um chocolate malt some and a, cocktail yeah or whatever yeah um yeah I, uh but I, I find sometimes things surprising things inspire me and half the time i'm not even sure what it is that right. inspires me yeah and you gotta act I think it's out chemical. It. you know what i mean i think there's like a i chemical think it is yeah. that's just like whatever like sloshing around your brain when that thing's at high tide yeah you're like okay it's on yeah do you find it happens in certain moments that you can uh you can come back to it and go, oh, it's 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 always like when I'm half asleep or when I'm taking a shit or something like that. Right. Uh, no, I, no. Um, I'm kind of glad it's not when I'm taking a shit. Yeah, because then you've got that in your head the whole time. Yeah, like, and then this, it's this just song like, was written. Yeah, like the shit the, smell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, you know, the thing that inspires me actually is counterproductive, which is if I if I'm away from an instrument for a while. If I don't have that release, like I find, so for example, right. if, I'm, if I'm like focused on technique and I'm doing like practicing, then then I don't that stuff doesn't bubble up. But if that, I think that's a basic human characteristic. Yeah, if I leave it alone and I come to it, it's like I I can't. I don't, yeah, I have more ideas than I actually. Have time. That's true. When I'm the farthest away from a guitar, that's when I think of a a, a tune in my head. Yeah. So then you got to get your phone out and sing into it. Thank God for those things, man. Yeah, yeah. that's a, like the, um, yeah. the the voice, like you know, whatever recorder app on my iPhone. Yeah, is is oh definitely. It's, it's, it's a like, songwriter's. Yeah, dream. it's a miracle. Because yeah. yeah. I used to have one of these things, but it's like you're not gonna. You're I not bought gonna one and it. gave it away. I'm like, I never carried around. It's yeah. yeah. But the who uh, knows? Maybe it sounds good. I hope. I hope so. I'm sure it's picking up every last ice cube that's being made right now. <laughs> I, I hope this picks up because uh, this is a good one. Uh, this is a good sing song. Um, but yeah, so the other thing I try and do, so the future folk thing is is one thing, and then when I'm writing my own stuff, uh, I try and write. Again, I feel uncomfortable writing about myself directly because. Yeah. I find it insufferable when people talk about themselves too much. Talk about sing. themselves, but it, it, do you find it insufferable when uh, a singer sings about his life in, in an interesting I, way? I, I think that the margin of success is narrower. Really? Yeah. 
because I think it, it, it's very easy to come off as fatuous and I don't know. I, I mean, that's that's the, all, my, all my big words I know. But That's interesting. Uh, I wonder how you'd feel about my stuff because I think my stuff is very personal. There's, it's not to say there's not personal stuff that I don't like, but well, I, I myself feel like I don't, maybe I'm not confident enough in the, um, in the craft to be able to lift that up. Maybe yeah. it's that I don't I want really, people to n- know those true. I, I, I maybe, know. maybe. But I, yeah, I, I find myself really liking artists who are personal and. See, I, I like personal, but just not personal me. Like personal right. to. Yeah. Personal, but not about me. Right. Right. Well, there's, there's, of, of course, if you if you write a song and it's personal, you've got to have a universal appeal to it. Yeah. Um, and if it's going to work, there has to be some sort of empathy to that perspective. Right. And in order to have that empathy, you need to experience it in some way. Like I wrote a song and I for the Christmas album, and I'm not sure anyone's going to like it because it's it's about a very specific Greek tradition where if someone in your family dies, you don't put up Christmas ornaments or lights or mm. trees that year. Oh, I haven't. I, I've never heard of that. Yeah, but. What it turned also into is a song about remembering the dead, and mm. this happened 40 years ago, and I want to do it again, just to bring that person back. But that, into my but that's you get way. you get a pass for that because that's not about that's not about you. That's about that's your right interpretation of a thing. Right, it's my interpretation of a thing that I'm trying to universalize sure. by saying it's about it's about remembering someone after they die. Um, can I can I do a uh, an, another song because I think this will be yeah. this will sort of a, be a good example of um, maybe what I'm talking about. I, I had um, a couple songs I, I wanted to play, but I think this is um, this is maybe in terms of sort of like putting yourself in a character. Yeah. That's not me, but but personal. But personal. Yeah. And essentially, what this the the thrust of this song is, it's about somebody who loves music more than other people. Yeah. I love it. I love it already. After the last of them have gone After all the bottles have been shattered on the lawn for the night is through There's something we gotta do There's a part of me I wanna share with part of you It's late, quarter to two I really wanna kiss you just the whole night through This day what I got to do Is to get some perspective on your point of view have you ever heard this one by Husker Du? It's the band that is my favorite band. This is the band that is my favorite band. Won't you sit right back? I'll play a track or two for you. Maybe it can be your favorite band. It could be the band that is your favorite band. Classic track from way back in 1982 
A world that did exist but that I never knew A world before I ever knew I needed you Is that in your? Uh, is that an alien singing? No, no, no. This is that's this is that's yeah. a separate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's no no right no <laughs> mention mention of that'd be that'd be kind of weird if that was like an alien who's like I'm really into Husker Du. Right, but by I, the way, there's no music on the on the the whole premise is that there was no music on our home planet. So when we that's why we stayed on Earth because in the movie right in our backstory is well like, I interpreted it as because there's a line that says a world that I never knew. That's true. Yeah. So I yeah. thought maybe. He came and yeah, but that's his... and and that's the like sort of the longing for connection yeah. that's peeking out beneath this greater need to connect on this right mu- on this music thing. Yeah, and by the yeah. way, I don't like Husker Du, and that was just sort of like a, <laughs> it's not that I dislike them, but it's not it just like, rhymed. Yeah, it's, it's an arbitrary. Paul, Paul Simon has a, a story where Mickey Mantle came up to him and said, "Why'd you uh, why'd you mention Joe DiMaggio in uh, Mrs. Robinson? What's what's wrong right. with me?" And he's like, yeah. he's like, you know, I mean, Mickey Mantle was more my time. I, right. I liked him more. Didn't but, have the right amount of syllables. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's like I, you can't say where did you go or yeah, right. where did you go, Mickey, Mickey Mantle? Mantle. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just yeah. wouldn't sound right. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, it's it's a magical a magical thing, and I, I think that being your worst. Critic, like being your being a self critic. Yeah, that's the that's the I to me is the is the part that separates, like, sort of, I don't know, egotistical ramblings to something that's like like when I write stuff, I'm like, is this something that somebody's going to want to listen to? Are they going to drop off in the first seven seconds? Right. I mean, you have to. It's 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 a dichotomy. You have to be uh, your worst enemy and. Your greatest benefactor at the same time. I got to work on that second part. <laughs> that, yeah. Well, you're doing it because you're you're actually writing and performing, and you know, yeah. um, believe me, you're you're behind yourself. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what that's what I mean. You know, you in in order to be an artist, you got to hate and love yourself. Yeah. I think. Does that look like I was walking on the beach and I looked back and there were four sets of footprints <laughs> and it was like I was behind myself and I was like, dude, I was pushing you the whole time. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I was talking to someone I can't remember if it was about music or just writing and I don't remember who it was but they had um, a way of writing where they were writing I think it was definitely about music and I think it was on sing songers mm-hmm. so I'm going to get in Are trouble they making popcorn now oh no that's the ice that's still the ice but writing in the point of view of someone who is least like them like mm-hmm. you know like yeah like, like i can see that as like actually god yeah it was just i think it was the last sing songers i did but i i'm a drunk and i can't remember but uh uh it was a woman and she was talking about like how it was about you know oh I, yeah i listened to the oh part yeah, of that yeah, yeah 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 it was she was Ali. It was Ali Kazoo. Right? Ali Kaz- Ali- what? Cali Kazoo. Cali Kazoo. I'm drunk. Yeah, she, she was talking about. It. All right, forget it. Just go back and listen to last sing song. <laughs> You'll know what I'm saying. <laughs> but uh, yeah, writing through the point of view of the person she's least like. Yeah. Yeah. In, I think, in a situation. I that, but honestly, I think that those probably those constructs are a way to distance yourself from the fact that you probably are still writing about yourself definitely i think we even talked about that you know like even if you're writing about a fictional character you're going to come through it yeah in some way because you're writing it right you know right i mean the circumstances are different the personality is different but ultimately the emotional impact like you can imagine being you know, it's like when somebody's like, well, what would you do in my position? And you're like, well, is that if I'm you or I'm me? Right, yeah, exactly. You know, like, I, and then if I'm me, but I'm in your position, did I get there because those were my decisions or because those were your decisions? I have a lot of these arguments. My, my big argument is like, 
if you were Hitler, you would do exactly what Hitler did. Well, because you'd be Hitler. Yeah. But people would be like, no, but I, I wouldn't. I'm like, yeah, no, you wouldn't because you'd be Hitler. Because you'd have his brain and, then and you'd someone, have those, like, whatever, like, pathways the exactly. neurons, like, build your personality. Yeah, from. and you would have the same exact upbringing and the same exact everything. And then I had some idiot go, yeah, but there's going to be an X factor involved. And I'm like, all right, argument's over. Yeah, that's X a, factor. Yeah, that's stupid. You're a fucking yeah. asshole. Yeah. Cunt. Yeah. Sorry, I, I think I'm too drunk to keep going with this. Yeah, that's the C factor. <laughs> uh, oh, and now there's a baby. Baby, what is it? All right, baby's at the jukebox. Baby's at the highway to hell. The baby's picking songs. No, nope, nope, now it's butt. like Clash. Uh, nope. Now it's being ba- led. No, uh, yeah. The adult is leading the baby. Black As Sabbath. As usual. Cool. Oh, we're back to ACDC. All right. Someone's holding a baby at the jukebox. Mm. Yeah. Um, anyway, I think I think I might be too drunk to keep going. Okay. But this was this yeah, is great. Totally. Thank you so much, man. Thank I you. Appreciate it. Yeah. No. This was this was good. the United States government, it is the mission of the National Security Agency to assess and flag citizens of the country who may present a threat to its security. The NSA has clearance to wiretap by any means necessary. Tapped. Incidental recordings of private conversations from the files of the NSA. Now on feralaudio.com. 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 Feralaudio.com.